In this video, we're going to be discussing the concept of molar mass and the related idea of percent composition. Let's start with a quick list of the learning objectives that are going to occur in this video. Uh, first, we're going to do a little review, which is going to lead us into a new definition. We're going to talk about atomic mass and molecular mass, which are things we have already discussed. And we're going to introduce the new idea, which is molar mass, something we have not yet talked about. Uh, and Molar mass is going to be the one that we're going to be handling a lot for the rest of the year. After that, we're going to talk about the process of calculating molar mass as a numerical value we're going to be needing to use for conversions. And then finally, we're going to finish off with the idea of percent composition, uh, discovering what fraction of a total element of a total compound is made up from each element. A uh, similar idea would be something over here. This is a pie chart that shows us what fraction of our atmosphere is made up of each of the individual gases, oxygen, nitrogen, and then all the trace substances that occur over here. Let's start by discussing some of those quick ways we keep track of the masses of a chemical compound. Uh, we've already talked so far about this year of the idea of atomic mass, and it is the total mass of a single isotope of an element. Uh, this mass is relative to a carbon atom, and the way this is done is a carbon atom is divided into 12 equal pieces. Uh, we do this because um, the protons and neutrons actually have a slightly different weight. This is a way of standardizing that. Atomic masses, as we've done so far in the year, have, atom have numbers that go in the units of atomic mass units. And a great example of this would be the element carbon. The element carbon, you can look up on your periodic table, is 12.0107 atomic mass units. Nothing new here. We could then extrapolate this further and talk about the idea of molecular mass. This is the total mass of all the op op the atoms that make up your molecule. It's the total mass of your compound, basically. Uh, just like atomic mass, it is also measured in the units of atomic mass units. Uh, a great example of this would be the compound CH4. This is made up of one carbon atom and four hydrogen atoms. If we wanted to know its molecular mass, we would say that it's the mass of the carbon, which is approximately 12, plus the mass of the hydrogen, which is approximately 1, and there are 4 of them, and 12 plus 4 times 1 gets us a mass for this molecule as being 16 atomic mass units. So just like we can calculate or look up the mass of an individual atom, we can calculate the mass of an entire molecule, and it's the same concept, uh, just dealing with a sum in this case. Unfortunately, neither of those values are going to be very useful for us in the stuff we're about to do. Uh, we always want to be able to relate a certain mass to a certain number of molecules. And that brings us to our last term that's going to be new for us, and that is the idea of molar mass. Uh, molar mass is the mass of one mole is the mass of one mole of atoms or molecules. And if you recall, one mole is equal to 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd things. And again, what this really does for us is it links together a number of atoms to a mass. If you recall from previous discussions, number of atoms is what we deal with when we're talking about balanced reactions. Mass is what we deal with when we talk about things that occur in the lab when we measure stuff. So we have to be able to connect these two ideas together so that we can use the balance reaction to relate to what we're doing in the actual lab. Now I think we should take a break right now and talk a little bit about how to get these ideas of molar masses. Let's put into practice some of the definitions we just talked about. Uh, you should take a minute and sketch in your notes a quick copy of this table. In the first column, we'll calculate, or actually in this case, look up the atomic masses of a couple elements. In the second column, we'll calculate the molecular masses of a couple compounds. And then finally, we'll translate those molecular masses into the more useful term we're going to be using, uh, which is the molar mass of our substance. We'll tackle that in the last column. So let's look up a couple quick elements here. It doesn't matter which ones. Let's go with carbon let's go with chlorine and let's go with the element iron. A uh, quick look on our periodic table tells us the mass of a carbon atom is 12.0107 atomic mass units. Looking up for chlorine there are 35.453 atomic mass units for a chlorine atom. And then finally for iron we can look iron up as being 55 0.845 atomic mass units. 
Now let's move on to our second definition, which is calculating molecular masses. Now we cannot get the molecular mass of individual elements like this, but we can put them together into compounds. For example, CCl4, carbon tetrachloride, we can calculate its molecular mass. Uh, it's got one carbon atom and four chlorines. We can take the mass of carbon and we can take the mass of chlorine and add those two guys together. We're going to get 12.0107 plus 4 times 35.453. And we can add those up, and we're going to get an answer something in the vicinity of 153.82 atomic mass units, something you would definitely do with your calculator. So that would be the molecular mass of CCl4. And likewise, we can repeat this process with another compound. We can do FeCl3. This is iron 3 chloride, and it's the same process. We're going to take the mass of the one iron atom, 55.845, and we're going to add that to the mass of the three chlorine atoms, which are 35.453 times the three. And in this case, we get the answer of 162.20 atomic mass units. So again, just like we can look up atomic masses from our periodic table, we can do some very simple mathematics here and calculate molecular masses of actual compounds. Now if you recall back from our video on moles, uh, the beauty of the mole is the fact that it does a conversion for us and it gets us out of this unit, atomic mass units, which is not convenient for us. We cannot measure things in atomic mass units, and it gets us into the units of grams. So we don't actually have to calculate anything for molar mass. We take the exact same thing we had for molecular weight, and we get 153.82. But in this case, it's not an AMUs anymore. It's grams for every one mole. And likewise, down here for iron chloride, its weight's going to be 162.82. To zero grams for every one mole. So again, if you recall, the reason we have this funky number, 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd, the reason we have this funky number uh, is because it does this type of conversion for us. Instead of converting the unit and getting a new number, we've come up with a value here that keeps the number the same and just changes the unit for us. So what you really want to take away from this is when we look up these masses on the periodic table anymore, it's not how many atomic mass units that is. We don't want to think about that anymore. We want to think about how many grams one mole of these atoms would be. AMUs is per one atom, grams is per mole of atoms. And these are the numbers that are going to do work for us later on when we start working with mole conversions. So to wrap things up today, we're going to finish with a quick idea known as percent composition. It's going to base right off of the stuff we just talked about with molar mass. When you're trying to calculate percent composition, we want to know what fraction of the total weight of a compound is made up from each individual element. Taking a look at the ones from below here, we see that this compound is made up of calcium atoms and it is made up of chlorine atoms, and a fraction of its total weight comes from each of these elements, and we want to know what that fraction is. This brings us down to an equation right here in the bottom. If you want to know the percent of some element x, it's going to be the total mass of that element x divided by the total mass of the compound, which we just determined is our molar mass. So this is the total mass of our compound. By the way, something I left off here, it's a percentage. So to make this percentage work, we have to multiply our answer by 100. So it's mass of the elements divided by the mass of the whole thing. The part divided by the whole times 100 is going to tell us what percent of this whole substance is made up of each individual element. What I'd like to do is try exactly this using the example above with calcium chloride. So our goal here is to figure out the total mass of the calcium divided by the molar mass of the actual substance itself. The first thing you're going to want to do in this process is calculate that molar mass. So our molar mass in this case is going to be equal to the mass of the calcium, which is 40.08, plus the mass of the chlorine, which is going to be 2 times 35.453. When you add all that stuff up, you end up with a total mass of 110.986 grams per mole. Remember, we're not interested in AMUs anymore. Now we talk about our molar masses in grams per mole.
So now we want to figure out out of this total 110 grams, what fraction of it is from calcium and what fraction of it is from chlorine. Well, we can do that math really simply over here. The total mass from calcium in this compound is this number right here from our molar mass calculation. We had a total of 40.08 grams of calcium divided by the whole mass of the substance, which is 110.986 grams here. We take that, we multiply it by 100, you punch that into your calculator, and I think you'll find that this substance is 36.1% calcium. So 36.1% of the total weight is, comes from the calcium atom. We can do the same exact thing for chlorine. It's the mass from chlorine. And notice we say total mass here, just not the mass of chlorine. And that's because in this case, chlorine is made from two chlorine atoms, and both of them contribute to that total mass. So it's going to be the mass of that chlorine, 2 times 35.453, divided again by the total mass, which is still 110.986. We take the whole thing and multiply it by 100, and we'll find out in this scenario that we are 63.9% chlorine. So 63.9% of the total compound calcium chloride is made from the chlorine atom's weight, and only 36% is made from the calcium atom's weight. This is about as tricky as these problems ever get. The only thing I can do to you to make these harder uh, is simply have more elements in the substance. And those aren't more challenging problems. They're simply longer ones. To conclude our uh, discussion today, i got a, one more problem for you. This is one I expect you to try on your own. Uh, we have the compound listed below, C2H6O. What I'd like you to do is calculate the percent composition of each element in this compound. Pause the video real quick, give this problem a try, and then we'll go over the answer together in a moment. As in the previous problem, the place to start first is to calculate your molar mass of the compound is the total mass of all the elements combined. Uh, we've got two carbons, 12.0107. We've got six hydrogens, 1.00794. And we've got one oxygen, 15.9994. All of these data values come from your periodic table, and the coefficients here come from the chemical formula uh, that we're using. Uh, when you add all this up, I think you end up with a molar mass of something in the vicinity of 46.068 grams for every one mole of C2H6O. Now our job is to calculate the percentage of each. We want to know the percent carbon, we want to know the percent hydrogen, and we want to know the percent oxygen. Well, percent carbon is always going to be the mass of the carbon divided by the whole thing. That's going to be 2 times the mass of each carbon atom divided by 46.068 times 100. Percent hydrogen is going to be 6 times the 1.00794 divided by 46.068, again, times 100. And then the oxygen is going to be 15.9994 divided by 46.068, again, times 100 to make them all percentages. When you plug all this information into your calculator, you're going to get three answers. We'll find out that this substance is made up of 52.1% carbon. It is made up of 13.1% hydrogen, and it is made up of 34.7% oxygen. And again, those are our three weight fractions or percent compositions of, for each element in this particular compound. Overall, I do not think of this calculation as being a very difficult one. If you're looking for some couple quick trips or tricks, the mass on the top is always going to be the mass of the individual element from the original equation when you calculated your molar mass. Here's our C, same term here. Here's our hydrogen, same term here. Here's our oxygen, same term here. And it's also important to recognize that these are just percent, co uh, percent calculations. A percent of anything is always equal to the part you're interested in divided by the whole times 100. In this case, the part we're interested in is the individual element, and the whole is always the molar mass. We'll practice more of these in class. Um, overall, I don't find students struggle with these too much. The reverse version of this calculation, which is what the next video will be, will pose a little bit more of a challenge.